This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about getting a miner, a Bitcoin miner, in every house and every business in the world. Yesterday I talked about the world's largest publicly traded Bitcoin miner possibly heading for bankruptcy court. This was Core Scientific, which has been unable to make the payments on their debt. And this led to some, some further thoughts that I wanted to cover in today's video. And make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because I'm gonna be covering some very, very interesting Bitcoin mining projects. So I have to admit, I'm not too sad to see Core Scientific go bankrupt. As we mentioned yesterday, and I mentioned it mostly in passing, large regulated Bitcoin mining companies are an attack vector. The US government or another government can tell them not to include transactions from particular Bitcoin addresses or risk losing their licenses, their registration, all their official government cooperation. Now, so far the blowback has been huge whenever an American public company has tried to censor Bitcoin transactions. This happened with Marathon, where on May 7th of 2021, they started mining a few blocks that they said were OFAC compliant. They were compliant with U.S. Treasury regulations. And it just took about two weeks until the blowback was so hard that Marathon said they would stop censoring certain transactions. And so there's not a lot of tolerance for this in the Bitcoin community. And the Bitcoin Bitcoiners will do whatever they can to try to uh, publicly shame companies that do something like this. It's obviously much worse over in Ethereum in meth head land, thanks to the merge. Ethereum has already become state captured and most people don't even realize this yet. And there's unfortunately for them, no going back. If we take a look just over the last day, for example, all the OFAC compliant blocks that have been validated over there, 66% are following government censorship rules. And they have to because the large Ethereum stakers are mostly regulated companies that have to follow these rules. There's a great tweet from Not Grubles pointing out that if at some point 99% of Ethereum blocks are OFAC compliant, then this means that there's a very high likelihood that Vitalik's own validators are OFAC compliant. Again, OFAC is just this department of the treasury that deals with things like uh, targeting uh, terrorist money and money laundering, etc. That will either make you laugh or cry depending on whether you're a bag holding ETH. So this is happening in ETH land. It's much better over in Bitcoin land. Any Bitcoin miner can choose not to include a particular transaction in a block that they mine. So for example, an American Bitcoin miner may choose not to include any OFAC listed Bitcoin addresses. Now, of course, a Chinese or Russian miner or some other country won't care if an address has been listed by OFAC and will go ahead and include that transaction in a block and vice versa. If there are Chinese restrictions on certain Bitcoin addresses, an American miner is not going to care about this and will include the transactions in a block. So this is one of the nice things about having Bitcoin, Bitcoin, not just Bitcoin nodes, but also Bitcoin mining nodes, Bitcoin miners globally distributed. Now there's the other piece of this, which is that's really an economic game. If you increase a transaction fee on your transaction, there will at least theoretically always be a Bitcoin miner who's willing to include your transaction in a block, if not an American Bitcoin miner or a Bitcoin miner that's in the physical, within the physical boundaries of the US, a Bitcoin miner that is somewhere else. The one thing we don't want is large regulated corporations like Core Scientific in any country, or certainly not concentrated in any country. We don't want them controlling a large percentage of the total Bitcoin network hash rate. Now, it's important here to point out that we're talking about companies that control, control or physically custody the Bitcoin mining machines, which are also called ASICs. Bitcoin mining pools are a completely different story. So for example, I could join a Bitcoin mining pool from Colorado and the Bitcoin mining pool might be based in China or some other country. I can just point my hash there. And if I don't like the way they're behaving, if, if that mining pool goes rogue and starts trying to do bad things to Bitcoin, I can always point my hash to another mining pool almost instantly. So these mining pools, they are virtual things. They're nodes that you point your, your, the hash rate of your particular Bitcoin mining machine to. So it's very easy to move to a different pool almost instantly if the particular pool that you're mining for tries to do something 
bad. And we saw this happen. I forget the name of the uh, of the pool. I think it's actually it was called Poolin, where they stopped. Uh, it looked like they were having some financial troubles, and they would they were going to stop paying out uh, earnings, and everyone immediately switched out of that pool in, in a question of just a few hours. So this is easy to do if the ASIC, if the Bitcoin mining machine is in your own custody, if it's in your house, if it's in your attic, if it's in your garage, if it's in your backyard. You don't want to use something like Compass Mining hosted solutions where your ASIC is sitting somewhere else. So for example, I, I thought of this phrase, not your garage, not your ASIC, sort of riffing on not your keys, not your coins. Lots of Compass Mining customers had their machines confiscated in Russia. Now, I think every real Bitcoiner should have a miner in their house. I'm a hypocrite so far since I haven't done this yet, but I, I'm beginning to see this all come together, at least mentally, that a true sovereign Bitcoiner, and it's taken me a while to get to these very obvious points, but a true sovereign Bitcoiner really needs to run his or her own Bitcoin full node, own Bitcoin miner, hold your own private keys, etc., and contribute to the ecosystem in many ways, in as many ways as possible. Now, this is going to become easier to do once many households and businesses start using Bitcoin mining machines to help heat their air and water. And I think this is one way that it enters, that Bitcoin mining really enters the mainstream. And I'll give you a few examples, but I'll start with a business idea. Start a company. I, there's probably some companies doing this, but I, I couldn't find any using a cursory search. Start a company that builds water heaters with built-in Bitcoin mining machines. I'll definitely buy one if you have a company that does that. At this point too, I just wanna ask you if you're enjoying this video so far to hit that subscribe button hit the like button, maybe share this video with a few friends as well. Here's an example of ASICs heating a 40 room hotel room during the winter. So th these are very nice commercial applications of proof of work of Bitcoin miners. And unfortunately, Ethereum can't contribute to something like this because they moved to proof of stake completely. Here's another example, a more uh, kind of a household example from at Denver Bitcoin. And he's saying it can be financially beneficial to mine Bitcoin at a loss. Sounds funny. For example, I normally spend $120 to heat my house. If I use a Bitcoin miner to heat my house, even if my power bill goes to 200 a month, as long as I earn more than $80 worth of Bitcoin per month, then I'm heating my house for less. And I think this can become increasingly common. Last year, I, I linked to this example of a hot tub that's being heated using Bitcoin mining machines. I believe this was in Texas, if I remember correctly. And this even caught the attention of Elon Musk last year. I'll link to this below if you want to build your own hot tub that is heated by a Bitcoin ASIC. I think that's pretty cool. Here's an example of a part of Vancouver, North Vancouver, as being the very first city in the world that's going to be heating using Bitcoin mining. And the company they're using is a company called Mint Green. It looks like they create they've created sort of commercial versions of what I'm talking about, large Bitcoin um, Bitcoin boilers, uh, where they use the heat comes from from ASICs. And I'm not sure if they're heating using, if they're heating the water or they're heating, I think they're heating both the water and the air. So if you live in Vancouver, this is uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. This is definitely something to check out. I think we're going to discover that Bitcoin mining has many, many different industrial and residential applications. And the nice thing as well as it can use energy, these Bitcoin miners can run on electricity that is derived from things like stranded renewable energy, whether that's wind or solar that's a little bit off the grid, methane from garbage dumps, flared natural gas that would otherwise be released into the, into the atmosphere. And I think it's important to note as well that some of these small off-grid home mining operations may actually have much lower electri electricity costs than companies like Core Scientific, like large corporate mining operations. And in most cases, they're going to be run much better as well. They're not going to blow up and take on too much debt as Core Scientific did. These home miners will keep chugging along even while Core Scientific heads to bankruptcy court. Here's an example of Exxon partnering with Caruso Energy Systems to use some of the gas that's a byproduct of their oil drilling in North Dakota to use it to power mobile generators that then run Bitcoin mining machines. And so they're very good, large corporate versions of this. Here's an example I've talked about before using methane and other landfill gases 
to power Bitcoin mining machines. Here's another great example from the county of Armagh in Ireland, 35 Bitcoin miners being powered off grid by waste, by organic waste on this picturesque farm. So I'll link to this article as well so you can read about that. I think we need to do our part to help spread the Bitcoin hash rate globally. And eventually we, we want to reach the point where there are Bitcoin mining machines in everyone's garage, in everyone's water heaters, in everyone's HVAC systems. Even for those who aren't really into Bitcoin, this can be a nice stream of income that can be used to supplement any household's budget. The thing is governments can apply pressure to large regulated corporations, but not necessarily to millions of individuals in different, different countries all around the world who are mining and in possession of their own Bitcoin mining machines. If you have any experience mining Bitcoin at your house, please let me know in the comment section below. It's been on my to-do list forever. Where should I start? The one thing I found online is here's a tweet from Hodlorado, who I assume is in Colorado as well, using the uh, an upstream data black box and connecting it to his furnace. So I'll link to this in the description notes below and you can check out how he's doing it. The company he's talking about is called Upstream Data. And if we take a look at what they have, they have ASICs for sale. They also have these black boxes for sale, which I believe help to mitigate the noise. That's the one thing that's been holding me back. I've heard that these Bitcoin mining machines are extremely loud. And so that is a concern. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. Let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below, especially as I said, if you're doing some Bitcoin mining at home and you have any tips or links that you can share, that'd be really appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.